Today we are going to compare the new Peloton Bike Plus with the Echelon EX5S. This is the one with the 22 inch touchscreen. These are both quiet fluid bikes. They have magnetic resistance, but there are some unique differences. So let's do an overview of each bike with the different features and options that they offer. So first off, let's compare the frame design on both the Peloton Bike Plus and the Echelon EX5S. Um, as you can see, the Peloton Bike has a standard design. You've got the flywheel in front directly underneath those handlebars. The seat is back behind. Uh, and so it's just typical of what you would see on an indoor exercise bike. The resistance knob is right here. It's very easy to reach. It doubles as a brake because it's directly above the flywheel. So you can just push down and it will stop that flywheel. This bike does have magnetic resistance. So right up here, just above the flywheel, you have uh, magnets. And as those magnets get closer to the flywheel, they increase the tension, the magnetic tension on the flywheel to resist make it harder as you're riding, but there's no friction points because it doesn't actually connect with the flywheel. So the bike is very quiet, regardless of how much resistance you've got on there, you can ride and it's practically silent. That Peloton bike has three points of adjustment. So the seat will move up and down. It will also move forward and back. Uh, the handlebars will also move up and down, but they are a fixed distance from the screen. Peloton recommends that riders be 300 pounds or less for this bike and their height range is between four foot 11 and six foot five. So just kind of a few things to be aware of. The bike itself weighs about 140 pounds. So it is a good sized, heavy, solid bike um, and provides a nice feel as you're riding. And it has 100 magnetic resistance levels. So that's one thing I love about Peloton is the way that they've delineated their levels just, just makes sense to me. So the Echelon bike, as you can see, it has a different style frame. And we've seen this on other bikes, it's not unique to Echelon, but your flywheel's in the back. So that's something that's different. Uh, and one of the reasons that they do this is because when you're riding indoors, especially under high exertion or high tension, you tend to sweat a lot. And sometimes that sweat can drip down on your flywheel. So if you move it to the back, it's out of what they call the sweat zone. But it really doesn't affect the ergonomics of the bike at all because it doesn't really, since you're not riding outdoors, it doesn't matter where that flywheel is located. This also has magnetic resistance, so it doesn't make any noise. They've delineated their resistance levels to 32. So you've got 32 resistance levels on there. Uh, it's not quite as intuitive as far as numbering as the Peloton, but you do have really good max resistance. So it should support um, the strength of most riders. So the one thing I like about this V-shaped design, as you can see, is as you raise the saddle and you raise the handlebars, you increase the reach, which is the distance between the nose of the saddle and kind of this last horizontal bar right here. Um, so for taller riders, you have a lot of space on this bike. Uh, they don't necessarily provide an overview of who should or shouldn't, like they, they don't say 411 to 65 or whatever, but I kind of feel like any rider would fit on this bike. And we actually have some taller guys here. Um, Matthew is six foot five and he fits on this bike just fine. Doesn't ever bump his knees on anything up front, which sometimes happens on some of the other designs. So the other thing that's unique about this one is it has four adjustment points. So your saddle will move up and down. It will also move forward and back. The handlebars will move up and down just like on the Peloton, but here your handlebars, you can actually adjust the distance between the handlebars and the screen. So the handlebars kind of float here along this anchor bar, which does allow you to once again, increase the reach a little bit more if you would like to, or let's say you're, you prefer to ride more upright, you can pull those handlebars back towards your torso. Um, so you've got four adjustment points on there. So just a, a, a little bit of a difference. This also has a resistance knob right here, and I love the knob. I feel like the use of the knob is just very intuitive. And it has a brake because your flywheel is back there rather than directly underneath, you kind of push it back towards you rather than straight down. So just kind of a negligible difference. And one thing I love about Echelon is they have included hybrid pedals. To me, on a bike that costs this, you know, you're in a price range where you're expecting a premium product, it seems just intuitive that you would have hybrid pedals. Like that's kind of a no brainer for me. This has the SPD clips on one side, which typically you ride like a mountain bike, or if you take indoor cycling classes, almost all indoor cycling shoes feature an SPD cleat. So that's one nice thing is if you've already taken indoor spin classes, cycling classes, whatever, you will be able to clip into this, this pedal. Or if you want just a standard flat pedal with a cage, you have that option as well. 
Um, and this pedal just has more surface area than the Peloton attachment pedal. So it's more comfortable as you're riding. I feel like I have more support on my foot. And the overall footprint on the Echelon, it is 58 inches long, 61 inches high, and 22 inches wide. By comparison, the Peloton is 59 inches long, 59 inches high, and 22 inches wide. So there's just a very minor difference in the overall footprint of each bike. First off, let's take a look at the Echelon app interface and classes. So Echelon has done a pretty good job of dividing up their classes. I feel like the user interface is really pretty easy to use. You do have a lot of challenges listed here at the top. I'd rather see more class options, but I feel like they've expanded their content considerably and have a lot of really interesting options. Uh, as I was scrolling through, one thing that I was really excited to see are these center stage classes. So they have music from current uh, musicals and I, I like that. So I love Wicked, so I loaded Wicked and was, you can come down here and it actually has the original music by Adina Menzel. So let's say I want to start this class. I'm just going to kind of give you an idea of buffering time and load time. So right here, here's our instructor. Now I'm gonna collapse that leaderboard off to the side. They do have a leaderboard, um, it's fine. I find it to be a little distracting, but it's fine. So you can see the difference between the Peloton uh, screen and the Echelon screen is actually considerable as far as overall graphics, resolution, um, the way the screen is lit. And then within the app itself, the production quality is significantly different as well. And this is one thing I noticed right off with Peloton. And it's hard not to compare directly with uh, Peloton when you're talking about the Echelon app because they compare themselves to Peloton. So clearly they are working on creating content that is similar to what Peloton provides. One thing that I noticed initially about the Echelon kind of um, stage and area where the, the instructor is, is there's, there's just a lot going on. Like you've got mirrors behind and behind the mirrors, you can see reflections of trusses and lighting. There's open cables kind of draped on the floor. And I just kind of feel like I'm, I'm distracted. I'm trying to watch what's going on. And also they have not um, differentiated the balance between the music and the instructor. So you can turn the volume up or down, but you can't increase the music and drop the instructor volume. You can't inst increase the instructor and drop, drop the music volume. They're combined and I don't feel like you get the same music quality as you do on Peloton. It's more like they have recorded the voice of the instructor, but you're just hearing the overhead music in the room. And so as excited as I was about this class to dive in and enjoy the, the music from Wicked, it just did not give me that immersive experience that I wanted. Um, not because of any you know problem or fault on the part of the instructor. I just feel like production quality could be notched up quite a bit in order to be able to compete with Peloton. So just a few things that, that kind of stuck out to me. Um, it is Bluetooth enabled, so it will sync with your headphones. Um, you do have uh, speakers on the back. They're not great, they're fine. And you have a few little speakers here on the front. Your metrics are roughly the same and it does include a leaderboard. And then a lot of your class options are the same as well. Uh, the screen itself is just a little smaller. So this is a 22 inch touch screen compared to the, the 24 inch on the Peloton. Um, and the screen size to me isn't as much of an issue as just the overall production quality and the graphics. By comparison, I have loaded a Peloton program so you can kind of get an idea of the touch screen and the graphics and all that. So as you can see, this has some of the best graphics on any screen I've used on fitness equipment. It's very clear, it's crisp, the resolution is great, um, and the videography is impressive. The overall production quality is very professional. I don't feel like this is something that was filmed in you know, a yoga studio by day and then they come in and film bike videos. It's all organized, it's very clean, the background is clean, it's clutter-free, there's no random cables on the floor, um, and it just kind of pulls you into the experience. I feel like I'm right there in the room riding with the instructor, which is what you want. When you're paying for content on a subscription app, you want to feel like you're there. And I just feel like Peloton does that. Even the way the camera kind of just moves gently as you watch, it's just a little feature that makes a difference. Uh, the other thing I, I love about Peloton is they are known for their quality music and the music is impressive for two reasons. One, because they always tap your top artists to come in and provide top notch music. And two, because the way they break up the sound, you have the option of adjusting the balance. So you've got uh, 
I'm going to turn it up just a little. You've got adjustment here on the side. So it's preset to an original mix. So it's going to give you a preset balance, but then you can increase the instructor if you want and turn down the music, or you can increase the music if you want and turn down the instructor. So let me just show you how that sounds real quick. So right here, starting with the original mix, I'm going to increase the music. So the speakers on the new Peloton Pl uh, Bike Plus are on the front, which makes a huge difference. The sound volume is directed towards you. Uh, now, a lot of people probably ride with headphones, but you know, if you have small children or need to listen for the door or something else, you might not want to be plugged into the computer or to the screen. So it's really nice to have sound that is very high quality on the monitor itself. Uh, the other thing is the ability to break up that music to instructor. So if I want to listen to more instructor and less music, I can do that as well. Remember this time, 48, 52. If maybe I want to hear more about what he's talking about and I just need the music as a background component, you can divide it up. And I feel like being able to control that balance makes a big difference. So I just wanted to give you an overview of how each bike feels and functions when you're actually riding it. So as I mentioned, the geometry on both bikes is equally good. I feel like you can get a really nice bike fit on either one. Um, I like the position of the handlebars as far as the depth from the screen. And they have changed the angle of these upright parts of the handlebars so that you can pivot that Peloton screen just a little bit, which is really nice. Right now, I have the resistance set to 50. There's 100 resistance levels on the Peloton. Now, unlike speed, which is like a preset, metric resistance manufacturers can kind of divide up resistance however they want so the fact that peloton has 100 levels of resistance doesn't mean it has three times more resistance than the echelon they've just subdivided those levels into smaller micro levels so right now i'm at 50. i got a little bit of resistance but i'm really kind of comfortable right here so i'm going to increase it until i can't ride in the saddle anymore and see if i how high i can get it and i'll kind of let you know where we are so from 50, there's 60. So a little more engagement. I got a lot of quad going on right there. Let's take it up, 65. You can see it's starting to get heavy. All right, there's 70. So to spare my knees, I'm gonna stand up a little. There's 82. There's 85, I'm at 91. So I'm a relatively adept cyclist, but certainly not the strongest. And this is about, this is about max for me before I start to really feel it in my knees. Let me see if I can get all the way to 100. So there's that max resistance, kind of takes all of my body weight. I'm still able to pedal, but it certainly is enough resistance to kick your heart rate up and challenge even your strongest riders. And as you can tell, there's no sound. So those magnets don't make any noise regardless of your resistance. All right, so here I'm on the echelon and I've got the resistance turned all the way down to one. So I was able to tinker with the bike, find a nice good bike fit, um, I feel like I'm very comfortable. One thing I love about the Echelon is it has these little, I think they call them elbow supports here at the end, but they're perfect for my hand. So I really like this feature of the handlebars on the Echelon bike. The bike will tilt up and down, but it does not rotate side to side. So let's check out that max resistance, just like we did on the Peloton. I'm gonna turn it up. So I was at about one, I'm gonna take it about halfway find about level 16. So there's about halfway. I wanna say halfway on the Echelon isn't quite as challenging as halfway on the Peloton. So we'll see if it gets a little heavier as I keep riding. Let me take it up to 20. So there's 20. I'm starting to feel it a little, but I still have a lot that I can, I'm only at 120 watts. There's 23. So that's starting to kick in a little. 24, let's take it up to 28. 
that would be roughly 70%. Here we go. All right, so there's 28. So at this point, I have enough resistance. It's starting to be a struggle to stay in the saddle. I'm starting to get out of breath. So I got about four more resistance levels to the top. Let me take it all the way up. There we go. There's 32. So still hard, but I can ride in the saddle. So I wouldn't say it's quite on par with Peloton as far as overall resistance. You can ride up out of the saddle. The bike's very stable, but once again, doesn't make any noise. So that just kind of gives you an overview of the resistance differences between the two. So as you can see, there are some definite benefits to each bike. And I really feel like either one will provide you an excellent indoor cycling experience. You can't really go wrong. A lot of it comes down to your price point and what you want out of the bike. For taller riders specifically, especially those with long legs, the, the Echelon is a great option because you just have all that room up underneath the screen and you can, sh you can shift those handlebars just a little, which I really like. The hybrid pedals are so nice just to have that option. Uh, and just in general, I feel like the overall geometry on the Echelon is very comfortable. I'm not finding myself fidgeting or getting uncomfortable during my ride, which sometimes happens. So that's something that really makes a difference when they've dialed in that geometry. The Peloton, there's a reason that this is such a popular bike. They have really worked to create a design that is easy to use and easy to ride. I get right on and it just feels like I'm riding outside. I feel like as far as overall content and ride experience, you just can't go wrong with Peloton. The, the production quality, the uh, instructors, the music, the way they've dialed in the volume so that you can change um, the balance between the instructor, the instructor and the music. So it is um, you know, priced a little bit more, but Peloton includes both delivery and setup with the overall price. So that's not extra as you check out which is one thing to be aware of because that's gonna save you 200 to $250 depending on the bike that you order. By comparison, the Echelon does not include shipping or setup if you just opt for their basic subscription. If you just go month to month, then you're gonna pay extra for shipping and you're gonna pay extra for setup. So you gotta add another $200 to the overall cost of the bike, which actually brings these pretty close together in price. So a lot of it just kind of comes down to your budget and what you're looking for. But in general, we're impressed with both bikes and either one provides a nice ride experience. So as always, we would like to know what you think. Do you own either one of these bikes? Let us know what your experience is on either one. We do have pricing below, so click the link below for current pricing. And as always, if you'd like more information, check us out at treadmillreviewguru.com for a written uh, detailed review. So my name's Kristen. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'll see you again soon.